The black figure, I believe my childhood house is haunted. During the night toys would go off, TVs would turn off and on, and strange things would happen like things getting moved around and we would hear different noises throughout the day that didn't make sense, I shared a bedroom with my little sister until my older sister finally moved out and I had moved into my own bedroom. That made it so two of my brothers shared a bedroom and then my younger sister also ended up with her own bedroom. One night after I recently moved into my new bedroom I was trying to sleep, it was almost 2 in the morning. I kept tossing and turning, I could not find a comfortable spot. I finally just laid on my back and stared at the street lamp just outside my room, I started feeling even more uncomfortable. I got this eerie feeling. I got this feeling every once in a while through the years, living in this house. I decided to ignore it and try to force myself to sleep. I looked at my door, that was lit up by the street light. And saw a black figure, shaped like a tall man. It was clear as day because of the light. I froze. I didn't know what it was, I could just feel it staring at me. I didn't want whatever it was to know I seen it, so I didn't make any sudden moves, looking back now I don't know how I remained so calm. I closed my eyes hoping it wasn't coming close to me. After what seemed like forever I started calming down. I opened my eyes and I didn't see it anywhere. I felt a huge relief knowing it was gone. I definitely couldn't sleep after that. I thought that it could have been my mind playing tricks on me because I was so tired, I closed my eyes again and my door swung open. I peeked, not knowing what it was. It was my little brother. He looked in the room and then left. I was weirded out by this. I didn't know what he was looking for. I didn't get any sleep that night. My alarm went off at 6 am, I started my day. Exhausted I was definitely thinking about playing sick so I wouldn't have to go to school. I'm glad I didn't, my brother and I walked to the bus stop together every day. On our way there he asked me if I was awake around 2.30 am. I knew that was when he came to my room so I said no. He said you promise you didn't do it. I was lost by his questioning. I looked at him, confused and a little scared by the way he spoke. Promise I didn't do what? I said. He replied I was asleep and something pulled me out of my bed. I swear it was you, all I saw was a shadow heading towards your room by time I turned around. I was terrified. So was he. He's younger than me and I didn't want to scare him any more than he already was so I didn't tell him about the black figure I seen just before that happened. I also told him he must have fell out of his bed and was dazed and confused when he woke up and told him to forget about it, I will say that was the worst experience he or I had. Over the years nothing that dramatic ever happened again. The creepiest thing that has happened to me, I've seen so many unexplainable things over the years, I can't even list them all. I'll give you the most recent, I just bought my first home a few months back, the house was built in the 1940s. Since we've moved in, there's been some random noises we passed off as our cat, or wind, or the house settling at night. About a month after we settled in, I had a baking sheet frisbee through the house. It couldn't have fallen off the counter, it was in the sink. And to get to my sitting room, you have to come around a corner from the kitchen. The cat was on the bed with me, and yet my cookie sheet somehow ended up in the middle of the floor, in a completely different room from where it started, God damn it, Helen, is now a commonly shouted phrase in our house. The weird events at my old house, I lived in my old house from about the age of 5 to 12. Most of my time at the house was pretty normal however there were some strange moments. The first thing I really remember took place after one of my grandmothers died and I was probably around 10 years old. I had been getting ready for school and forgot something in my room, across from my room was a bathroom and the door was often left open and the lights were off and on. As I was exiting my room I looked into the mirror in the bathroom as the door was open a bit but not completely. When I looked into the mirror however, I saw a girl probably around the age of 12 or 14 with long, dark brown hair wearing a green shirt. I am blonde as well as my mom and my sister so it wasn't one of them messing with me. My grandmother had long brown hair and had once told me her favorite color was green though, at another point, I took part in this event where you built a small wooden car and would race it. My dad had decided to buy spray paint to decorate it and because I was 10 to 11 he didn't let me do it and after using it it was put away out of my reach and in a place I didn't know. I have an older brother as well as two younger siblings, the two younger ones would have been too young to get to the spray paint so it was pretty secure. One day my mom noticed that someone had used the spray paint to write her name on the basement stairs. I don't think my younger siblings did it, nor do I believe my older brother did it. 
We never did find out who did it when we moved, two of the things I remember took place in my bedroom. The first being a time where I had fallen asleep wearing jeans but woke up in shorts. I lock my door when I sleep and even did so when I was younger so my mom wouldn't have been able to come in and change my pants. I also was never known to sleepwalk and I find it unlikely that I would have been able to take off skinny jeans in my sleep. The other thing that happened in my room happened when I was just sitting on my bed reading or watching TV. My dad works in construction so he did a lot of work on the house when we moved in, which included fixing the closets in my room as well as my sister's. These closets were insulated and very difficult to open. While I was sitting on my bed I suddenly heard a bunch of the clothing hangers rattle. As I mentioned I was sitting in my bed, not jumping around or anything, and my parents who I shared a wall with were downstairs. The final thing happened when I was watching a video on my phone when I suddenly heard my mom call my name. I went downstairs and found my dad and brother in the kitchen. When I asked them where my mom was they told me she wasn't home and had taken my sister to cheer practice a while ago. There were no girls in the house but I had definitely heard a woman call my name. I have since moved and haven't had anything weird happen in my new house but I do think that some of the things that happened I know my old house were very strange. I didn't mention it but one of my younger siblings slept walk a few times when we lived there, and one time he walked into my room and started knocking on my closet door while calling my name. This is my younger sister's story, I was involved but have absolutely no memory of this, background, our family home was an unexceptional, three-bed house on a housing estate in England. It was built in the 50s-60s on farmland, not near any cemeteries, abandoned asylums or anything like that. Just a normal house, my mum would, from time to time, mention that she'd heard someone coming up the stairs at night when everyone was in bed. She would say that she would hear footsteps on the stairs which stopped when they reached the top. Neither my dad, younger brother, nor I ever heard anything like this, but my younger sister did, and experienced other things, we used to share a room and she would tell me that, as well as hearing that someone coming up the stairs, she would feel a presence sitting on her bed, she could feel the mattress go down, tugging her duvet and sometimes scrabbling about underneath her bed. The family dog, who sometimes slept in our room, would also react, staring at a fixed spot, hackles up and growling. She told me that this mostly happened when I was away from the house, at a friend's or away at uni, however, one particular incident occurred when I was at home. I had done some studying and gone to bed. My sister told me that she came into our room at bedtime to find me sitting bolt upright, staring directly at her with a huge rictus grin on my face, the hallway light was on so she could see me. She described the grin as being demonic, as though my face was being stretched. She said my name twice, I didn't respond or move. Just kept staring at her. She closed the door quickly, before reopening it and switching on the bedroom light to find that I was sleeping normally. My sister was terrified and got no sleep, she kept looking over at my bed for the whole night, I have no memory of this at all and was only told about it some years later. Teddy bear in the hallway, so this used to happen when I was like 5 or 6 and I've never told anyone about it before. So to give you a visual the way the house was set up was when you walked through the front door and in front of you was the living room to the left was the kitchen and to the right was a long hallway that led to my brother's room mine and my sister's room and the bathroom. My sister's room was directly across from my own and in between my room and my sister's room was the linen closet. During this time I always slept with my room door open because for some reason I felt like it was safer than sleeping with it closed. On multiple occasions I'd wake up at some ridiculous hour and look to my immediate right and look outside my room. Standing there as if looking for something in the linen closet was a three foot tall teddy bear with what looked like a drill bit for a nose. Whenever I looked at it, it would stop what it was doing, turn its head towards me and just stare at me. It never moved and never made a sound it would just stand there like I caught it red-handed and stare at me. After I moved from that house I never saw it again but it was something that always scared me absolutely shitless. We contacted a demon through an app, this happened a few years ago at my friend's apartment that we both know was haunted. We decided if we could contact anything through an app some of my favorite paranormal investigators used on YouTube. I've always been skeptical about spirits communicating through phones and apps, so we didn't think much would happen, so we started talking through the app and at first nothing happened, we would get responses, but nothing substantial or even relevant. That wasn't until the last session that made me delete the app. I should preface me and my friend are both Christian, but we do love the paranormal as we both had experiences that we can't deny, on the app we were using it gave levels of the spirit so, level 1 was light entity, level 2 was medium entity, and level 3 was negative slash high entity. 
On the last session it was on level 3. And it started off with random non-relevant responses and my friend said let's just turn it off and what came through the app was girls. We both stopped and just looked at each other. So we continued for a while and continued to get pretty accurate responses. Furiosity ceiling. Suburban. Female and then it took a turn for the worst. It said beast. I couldn't make out what it said at first, but I asked it for repeat itself and it said demon. At this point I felt sick and my head was pounding. I told it to leave if it wasn't of light and love, God, the Father, and Holy Spirit. It told me no. I repeated what I said and it left. My friend and I left the apartment with her dog and went on a walk for a good hour. When we got back to the apartment I felt like we were being watched and the blinds moved. She turned the air off when we left and her husband was at work, but it looked like someone was peeping through the blinds waiting for us to get home. She looked at me and told she had a pounding headache, the same as me. When we stepped into the apartment the air was heavy and I felt sick like I was going to keel over. We walked around the apartment praying for about 20 minutes when the air lifted and it felt a thousand times lighter, that night, however, I experienced sleep paralysis for the very first time. I could move slightly, but not much. I didn't see anything, but it was like the entire apartment was vibrating. I could see and feel it. I also heard a growling in my ear. I don't know how long it lasted. But everything subsided after a while. I went into a panic attack. That was the one and only time I experienced something like that. I deleted the app and haven't used it since, I now firmly believe that they can manipulate phones, but that was the most terrifying experience I've ever had. I told my mom about it and the only thing she said was with the headaches, it could have been trying to possess you. If you're doing any investigations, just be careful. I still have the recording. But I haven't listened to it since that day, all I can say is if you're doing any type of investigation be careful because you never know what you're going to encounter or experience. My one and only paranormal experience, one night, my then boyfriend, now husband, and I decided to take a little trip to Reno for a night. Kind of a getaway from our boring little town a few hours away, we checked into our hotel and began a nice night of drinking, partying, and gambling. Eventually the partying, we took a few pills that we got from a friend, got the best of us and we headed up to our room for the night, I had a hard time sleeping since it felt like the sheets were made of sandpaper. Just a side effect of our earlier fun. But at one point, I remember waking up a bit dazed still and seeing a very tall, black figure in the corner of the room where the window and the wall came to a corner. The curtains went from the ceiling to the floor and almost all the way to the wall. I figured that it was just the wind moving the curtain around even though the figure seemed to be much darker, I just went back to sleep because I couldn't remember if either of us opened the window before bed and it was probably just the drinks and pills playing tricks on me. Fast forward to about 6 months later. I am now 6 months pregnant with our son at this point. After watching a top 10 scary ghost sightings on YouTube together, I brought up that night to my boyfriend. I finally told him what I saw that night. I had never mentioned it before then to anyone, he told me that he actually saw the same thing, and even tried to wake me up because it freaked him out, but I wouldn't wake up, this has by far been the creepiest thing I have ever experienced. Mocking Shadow, when I was 17 my dad and I moved into my stepmom's house. From the moment I stepped foot into her house I had a creepy feeling about it. Always felt like something was watching me. Eyes following me all times of the day and night, I had just started meditating at this time as well but could never get full silence, even when home alone. There was always bumping in the attic or something moving in the other room. Shortly after moving in, I started experiencing the shadow. But I wasn't alone. My stepmom and my father had also seen this shadow. It would always dart from the hallway into my dad's study. After we all vocally acknowledged this to one another the activity started picking up, I was in my room one day and I heard our front door open. My dogs started barking and I heard my stepmom's voice asking the dogs if they wanted to go outside. She sounded chipper so I came out of my room to say hello but when I reached the living room, no one was there. My dogs were in the middle of the living room barking towards my dad's study. The front door was still locked and after looking around, I was still the only one home. Ah uh, nope. 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 I let the dogs outside to calm down and I went back to the living room. I asked that shadow to never mock one of us again. That we weren't playing games with it. I left the conversation one-sided and went outside until someone actually came home, fast forward to the weekend. 
I was in the city for a couple of days staying with a friend at her hotel, who had come to visit. I got a call from my father around 6 a.m. that next morning. Hungover, I still answered. He asked me where I was and why I left the house so early. I was extremely confused. He knew what time I had left the previous day. I asked what he was talking about. That I had been with, friend, all night. Silence. Then he said, no, you opened our bedroom door last night and told us you were home, then you walked away and went into your room and shut the door, silence. I was trying to figure out how to tell him that I was not home last night. When I did, he lost his shit, that shadow is mocking my voice now. And still does to this day. It still mocks all of our voices.